Unfortunately, we know firsthand how easy it is to crash a camper. Don't let this happen to you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you definitely will not live amazing if you are out in your RV and you crash it. Paul and I have <laughs> firsthand experience with that, unfortunately. In fact, I crashed a camper and totaled it a while back, and then we had an incident at a gas station. So in this video, we're going to share some lessons learned because we have found that it's actually all too easy to crash a camper. It just takes a, a momentary lapse of concentration and, and bad things can happen. So we actually got interviewed by Inside Edition this week and they wanted to hear about our gas station incident where we ripped the corner off the back of our RV. You know how showbiz is, a lot of our tips did not make the final cut. So we wanna share them with you because we think it's important. We know it's the beginning of camping season and a lot of people are getting out there and a lot of people just don't have experience with an RV. That was the thrust of this Inside Edition piece that they were doing. They were talking about how the number of RVs being sold has increased by I forget the number, probably 20, 30 percent, something like that. And so there's a lot of new RVers out there and, and beware. Anyone can buy an RV and drive it off the lot, whether it's a 40 foot fifth wheel or, you know, a, a class A drivable motorhome, and they don't have to have a special license. So let's talk about the first crash. Um, about almost 10 years ago, I had a crash where I totaled a, a bumper pull, a travel trailer. And the first tip I want to share is we had an agenda. And let me tell you, an agenda can cause an accident. If you're in a hurry, if you got to get there, you're going to be pushing past, you know, exhaustion. Maybe you need a break, but you want to just get there. You have only so many hours of the weekend. You want to make the most of it. Agenda can really be a red flag. Yeah, and it's hard, at least it's hard for me not to fall into that trap. That's kind of what happened with us at the, at the gas station. When we left some friend's house and we were gonna stop for a good breakfast and, and I just said, nah, let's just push through because it was a fairly short jump to the next stop. And I just thought, nah, I can make it. Well, that was mistake number one. It just snowballed from there. Yes. So. Another tip, and this was a big factor in the gas station incident, is that we were tired and hungry. You need to be on full alert. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. When you're driving one of these big rigs or just even towing something, you have to be on full all alert. You have to be aware of all four corners. I wouldn't even be doing what we're doing right now if we had the fifth wheel attached. We're, we're deadheading right now. I've got my eyes on the road. I try not to look over at the camera too much. You know, things happen quickly. Yes, yes. And speaking of that, a lot of RV accidents are caused by speeding. You really want to slow down. We actually talked to a couple when we were camping uh, in Minnesota that really wanted to go fast. They saw the speed limit was 80 in that area. And even though they had a travel trailer, they couldn't figure out why they couldn't go the speed limit. The travel trailer kept fishtailing and they told me that they took it into the shop right there where they were staying at the campground so they could get the travel trailer fixed. So it would go 80 miles an hour. They were that new to camping. And that's not unusual that people don't realize if you are pulling anything, the fastest you should be going is 65 miles an hour. And that's not with every trailer. There are some trailers you need to be going 60 miles an hour because that is a safer speed. Higher than that, it's likely to fishtail. For the first couple of years, I was staying between 55 and 60 the whole time. I've bumped it up to 62, 63 now, and I'm comfortable with that. But I suspect, in fact, I know we've gone a little faster than that on some on some long downhill sections. I do all I can to bring the speed down as quickly as and safely as possible. Well, that brings us to the next tip is know your equipment. You need to know how well that you're pulling your equipment, how fast you can go with it safely. You also need to understand trailer brakes. When I wrecked my travel trailer, I didn't understand how trailer brakes worked. And you don't want to learn as you get out on the road, heading to your first adventure. You want to do it 
close to home, go to a parking lot, maybe on a Saturday morning and just practice before you get out on the road. One thing that you can do if the trailer starts to, to whip around on you a little bit, I mean, not, you know, radical whipping around, but if it starts to sway a little bit, if you just grab your manual trailer brakes switch inside the, the truck and give it a squeeze, that will pull the trailer straight uh, a lot of times and save you from the trailer coming around to meet you. <laughs> you don't want that. The next tip is TPMS. Blowouts, tire blowouts are pretty common. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I check my air before I go on a trip. Well, you should. And people say, well, when I go to a rest stop, I walk around, I even check the temperature of the tires. Well, you should. And we highly recommend a TPMS system. And why is that? Well, because stuff happens when you're driving and uh, you're not checking your tire pressure while you're going down the highway. I mean, our, our truck has a TPMS system built in so I can see what the tires are um, as we're rolling down the road. But the trailers, in most cases, probably don't have TPMS and don't monitor the pressures constantly. Too high, too low pressures are what causes blowouts on the trailer. And, and if you've ever seen a trailer that's had a blowout, you know that it just it, it can tear up the, it will it'll always tear up the, uh, the wheelhouse, the, that trim around the wheelhouse. But it also can tear up a slide if there's a, if the tires are under the slide like they are with our rig, you're going to more than likely damage the slide. And on top of that, I mean, you could be forced off the road. You could actually get hurt. So we use TST Truck TPMS monitoring system. It is the best TPMS system on the market that we've found. We have a special link for you and a discount. We believe in it. We use the product. We've used it now for almost two years and we cannot say enough good things about our TPMS system. Yep, we keep the uh, monitor on our dash at all times. And something we've started doing recently is when we're gonna be maneuvering into a campsite or in a tight situation, if you're in a parking lot where there's, you know, you're trying to squeeze through a tight spot, the co-pilot will always get out. That would have prevented our gas station incident. If I was driving, so if Liz would have been out um, looking at the, the side that was closest to the pump, she would have stopped me before the damage was done. Make that a policy. I mean, that could save you thousands of dollars of damage. So our damage on the back of the rig cost $25,000, and then the damage to the gas pump cost another $5,000. At least cost the insurance company that. It didn't cost us that out of pocket. So we're a little unusual in that we share our mistakes on YouTube. A lot of people make it seem like they're perfect. Well, Paul and I wanna be the first to tell you that we're not perfect. And when we make a mistake, we share it on YouTube because we know it can help others. If you don't know, we've been on the road three and a half years. And if you've been traveling for three and a half years, stuff is going to happen. Every time stuff happens with us, we make a video about it if we feel it can be helpful because we feel like if we've made this mistake, then anyone else could too. To those people out there that, that like to take cheap shots at us on in the comment section, the difference between me and you is that I film my mistakes. Well, accidents are called accidents for a reason. You cannot prevent every one of them. So that's why we recommend that you have good insurance, adequate enough insurance to cover it. And if you're full timers, you want to have insurance that also pays for lodging. We learned the hard way when we had our gas station incident repair that we didn't have enough lodging. If you are full time RVers, you want to make sure that you up your insurance, it cost us another $9 to up our insurance, you know, significantly. Yeah, I think we had under a thousand dollars, which I think it was $700. Was it 700? So it wasn't yeah. even enough, you know, for, you know, we get a hotel and we lost our rig for several weeks. Um, so we upped it to like $5,000 for $9 a year. So call your insurance agent. I would say you want at least $2,500 if, uh, if that's an option. After we had the gas station incident, I made a note on the visor that asks, before we start, you know, we look at this visor and it asks, are we tired, hungry, sick, stressed? When I mean, you wanna make sure that you are firing on all cylinders when you're driving. You wanna make sure that you're 100% there and focused. In our case, you know, we've got 
15,000 pounds behind us, two and a half tons of, of vehicle. So we're, you know, we're rolling down the road at, at over 17,000 pounds. You just have to be on full alert. Absolutely, we just cannot stress that enough. Well, we definitely want you to enjoy camping. We love RV life and we'd love to see you out there. Let us know of any tips that we may have missed. And be safe out there.